New Year's resolution, somehow give even less of a crap about my hair. We didn't think it was possible, but I'm always out to top myself. <laughs> Shout out to jumpsuits for seeming appealing and then tricking you into getting naked every time you go to the bathroom. What is up guys? Welcome back. As you know, I am kicking off 2021 with a no buy month and in preparation for my no buy month, kind of inadvertently actually, I've just been binging Hannah Louise post and videos <laughs> because she did a no buy year and then she did a year of less stuff and then she did a budgeting year. And if you are ever looking to empty your brain and also like salve the wounds of over shopping, absolutely go watch her channel. It's one of those things where she starts talking and then you've lost like two hours of your life and you're like, God, I just feel so cleansed. She's like my alter ego with much more restraint than I have. But anyway, it made me want to make this video, which is instead of commenting on new beauty releases or will I buy it or anything like that, no, this video is going to be called talking myself out of new beauty releases. I'm just going to go through the requisite platforms, the places that tend to post the new stuff coming out in the makeup world. Typically, I would really, really prepare for one of these videos and have all of this litany of reasons and all this stuff in hopes that you would agree with me because God knows I just need everyone to agree with me. But no, this is going to be a video where even if I want something, I'm going to convince myself that I don't want it. So, Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be starting on trend mood because that's where you start. So the first thing here, and granted, I don't buy Clinique. I have been double checking on everything recently. I'm like, 2021, are you cruelty free yet? Because I do love Clinique. But this is a Lunar New Year, Year of the Ox highlighter. Not only do all these brands constantly go for the Lunar New Year thing every year to try and release some kind of special edition highlighter or whole collection or something, which absolutely fine. A, I do not need a new highlighter. I have so many highlighters, ones that I will never make it through. In fact, I'm wearing the full face of all of my Project Pan stuff. If you didn't watch the last video, I introduced all the products that are going to be my Project Pan, but there is like a mini highlighter in there and I think it'll take me ages to even get through that one. So A, I do not need a highlighter. Letter B. I mean, I guess we do makeup releases well in advance of certain events around the holidays and stuff like that, but I looked and I was like, the Lunar New Year is like the middle of February. This is a little bit early, isn't it? But either way, that is simply a gold highlighter, a goldy champagne highlighter. I'm sure that it is gorgeous, but I do not need it. There's also a lot of special packaging stuff coming out right now, e even for Lunar New Year or for the New Year or for Christmas or what have you. They're products that are previously released Released by brands that we all either know and love or at least we know but they are just in special packaging for the holidays and so that is not enough like I'm not a collector on that level I want again an encyclopedic knowledge of whether or not I like something but I don't I don't need commemorative packaging Ooh, okay JLo Beauty she has come out with a serum a highlighting complexion booster wonder night cream limitless glow sheet mask $18 for a sheet mask, fam. Now she has already released a few things from this collection. I know because I saw Lauren at the Honest Beauty Review talking about at least one of them recently, like on her stories and in a video. And it seems to be very polarizing in the sense of, does this celebrity have the right to put out her own skincare line, especially at this price point? And then the other side of it being, absolutely she does, especially if it works, the ingredients are great, I would pay for it, etc. Set aside whether or not you're a fan of JLo. Either way, you guys know how I feel feel about over-the-counter skincare. My skincare collection consists of basically two diametrically opposite poles. There is the very high-end, usually one dermaceutical at a time. And that's only if I really feel like I need it, but a lot of times it's just one active. I'm willing to pay more for an active. The other end of it is usually all my Good Molecules stuff. It's either things that, are, that do the heavy lifting or things that are just like everyday mainstays that I'm gonna burn through. When it comes to skincare that is just like a new release or something, I am hardly ever enticed. I learned enough about ingredients in 2019 to know whether something has an active in it that I care about. I know that glycolic doesn't really do that much for me. I know that lactic acid doesn't really do that much for me. I know that niacinamide works, but it's not worth paying a whole, whole lot for. And I know that retinol is going to be what absolutely like bombs my pigmentation in the best way possible. And it's just those things that you figure out. You don't need to go and try every new skincare line that comes out. Now, an SPF, that's different. I'm kind of always on the hunt for the next good SPF, but that one's only SPF 30. I've got plenty of SPFs on hand and 
I don't need it and I'm not going to buy it. And before we move on from skincare, I do wanna let you guys know I found a really awesome women's shelter organization here in Austin to donate my heaving stash of skincare that I wasn't going to use that was living in my closet and I dropped that off yesterday. And I feel incredible about it, <laughs> selfishly. I just was like, yay, these people are gonna get to use this and have like a little self-care moment and that made me so happy. So I do think that I'm going to reach out to some of these companies that are sending me skincare PR though this year and tell them not to because again, it's just not something, aside from like good molecules and the dermaceuticals and stuff like that, the actives that I'm willing to pay a lot for, I'm, uh, I'm probably not going to even open PR skincare. Okay, this is hard because A, I want to introduce more drugstore stuff stuff on my channel and B, this is actually really cute. The e.l.f. mini melt collection. It's all in like mint chocolate chip shades. Now I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to wear a mint green. So that's easy for me to write this off in that sense, but they do have shades in this, in the lip glosses and in the cream shadows that are not green. You wouldn't have to buy all of them. I don't think. And they do have some of their little, I really want to try some of these little tiny four pan guys, or at least try one of them and get an opinion on the formula that's in that specific packaging style. And I think that they're like two or three bucks. So it's not that big of a deal, but I'm not doing it right now, but it is hard because this is the limp limp good grief khaki lip plumping gloss and it is in this like the beautiful brown shade a couple of really beautiful brown shades and a clear yeah that's hard i think that you know worst case scenario some of this stuff is going to go on my list of things to try after my no buy month but i'm at least pumping the brakes and like exercising some discipline on it another one is the new foundation from urban decay i'm hoping they just send it to me <laughs> so that I don't have to buy it. But uh, if not, then I will end up buying it after January. So yeah, these little eyeshadow palettes are $4. The primer is $8. The whipped face mask is $8. They, the shadow stick is $5. Elf is just so accessible. So I definitely want to include more of their stuff at some point, but not, not right now, Khaki. Halsey is putting out a makeup brand, the next in line, I guess, for us all to support our favorite millionaires by buying their new beauty line. This is About Face by Halsey, and it looks pretty extensive. I'm like impressed by the colors. There's like a hunter green kind of lip, and then there's like a bright blue eye, beautiful swatches. And I think that this is really, really pretty, actually. It's kind of like, it's kind of like she saw the House Labs release and she was like, I could do better than that. <laughs> So I am not, no, I'm not not a fan of Halsey, but I could not name a song by Halsey. And I think that this is really, really beautiful, but she does not need my money. She's going to get plenty of Gen Z's dollars on this one. And I really hope that, you know, this gets really positive reviews. It looks really good. It looks really, again, extensive. And, um, you know, I hope for the best for her, but I don't think I will be reviewing Halsey's new line again, because I have absolutely no opinion on Halsey to begin with. <laughs> Okay, so the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude whole collection is being expanded and she is coming out with, what is that, eight lip liners and they really awesomely run the gamut. They have a really, really deep brown. They've got really fair peaches and pinks. They have actually a really gorgeous looking lavender kind of color, but here are a few things. One, I did just get every color that Koki makes in their lip liner. Two, State of Kate put together some packages from Fit Glow Beauty, I always forget their name, and sent them out for the holidays to a bunch of creators. And so I have three new lip liners from Fit Glow that I haven't even debuted on my channel yet. And yes, she also sent me the lip glosses, like a little pack of three of the lip gloss like minis to try. So I actually have tried a few of those off camera. One of them does happen to be a very pretty kind of cool mauve color. And I haven't tried the other two yet, but my nude lip liner collection is already pretty well fleshed out, you might say. And nude lipsticks are just not really my thing so much just because I feel like A, when we can't go and swatch things in store, they're incredibly difficult to pin down. And B, I already have ones that I like. And C, I'm more of a gloss girl anyway. So yeah, I don't think that I am going to be dipping into this collection right away. I think that this is a really cool thing that she did, but I don't personally need it. No, Ule, oh, Oh my gosh, Ule Henriksen just keeps putting out skincare that like would give Hiram nightmares. <laughs> this is the Lemonade Smoothing 
scrub. If you've ever watched him go off about scrubs, lemon on your skin, scented products, oh my gosh. Chemical AHAs and mechanical exfoliants, sugar, lemon, and silica. No. <laughs> I am not a skin influencer, but I have watched enough Hiram to know that he would hate this. So um, yeah, I can't, I cannot possibly. And Ule did send me some stuff this past year to try and I was just like, I'm sorry. I was really underwhelmed by the effects and I was really overwhelmed by the fragrance. Okay, another super tempting one. And I tried to buy this before the end of the year, but it was sold out. And I think it's because it only went to limited release in like Walmart. So this is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. So it is a new foundation from Wet n Wild. I think it's like, yeah, it's five bucks. It's $4 and 98 cents. It's in eight shades. There are three fair ones three medium ones and two that you could argue are deep. I'm not totally sure exactly what they would look like swatch. They don't have swatches on here. <laughs> oh my God, I just scrolled a half an inch and saw Kylo Fish has commented, please say psych, this can't be all the shades. So yeah, maybe I'm being a little bit too rose colored glasses on this one because that being the deepest shade is not it. But yeah, I do for the sake of accessibility and the sake of price and the sake of just, you know, showing a spectrum of things. That's what we talked about at the end of the year for my channel was we're not necessarily going for things that do everything right, but we are going to go for things that have a mindfulness to them of I want to review this for X reason and have a very distinct reason. And the distinct reason is I purport a very dewy, mm, you know, effortless kind of aesthetic on my channel a lot of times. And yet a lot of the products that I use are not effortless. They are very expensive. And I want to be able to offer that kind of glowy, dewy look to people who don't necessarily want to spend like $48 on a foundation. So I do want to try things like this going forward, even if they don't have a perfect shade range. I still think that it's worth offering a review on things that are more accessible to more people from a pricing standpoint. So I won't be buying this right now, A, because I couldn't get my hands on it anyway, but B, because I'm doing a no buy, but that one also might go on the list. So far in my brain, I have spent, what is that? $4 on an eyeshadow palette and $5 on a foundation. So my brain has spent $9 so far. Physicians Formula has come out with a matte Monoi Butter Bronzer. Butter Bronzer is a cult favorite, $13.99. Physician's Formula has some audacity for its pricing at the drugstore. Packed with essential fatty acids and pro-vitamins that soften, all star Okay, so here's the thing. I can't with a Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer because they smell like sunscreen, they smell like pina colada, they stink up my whole makeup collection. And again, it's something that some people absolutely love. I don't go hard for them. Fenty Skin, same reason. I'm just not out here to try new skincare lines, find what works, dial it in, that's my thing. I know what my skin needs and it's not Fenty Skin. All right, the Fenty new addition to the complexion family, say hello to Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. There are gazillions of shades in this, 50, 50 shades in this, 50, sh 50 shades of, of Fenty. I definitely think that this is a fantastic release, X, Y, and Z, but I have never been a fan of her complexion products because they all tend to be super high coverage. And we have talked about this before on my channel. A lot of people will argue with me, I know, but I'm not a powder foundation girl. Everybody's like, oh, there's a way to make it work on your skin, on dry skin, blah, blah, blah. I just am not really interested in it. It's just never been a thing that I've wanted to do because my skin is so dry. I have su such a wide world of foundations that will work for me. Why would I bend over backwards to make a powder foundation work for me by like, you know, putting all kinds of emollients on my face. I might as well be mixing my own foundation at that point. So no, I will not be uh, trying this one. And that's for, you know, a lot of reasons, but I think that this is a beautiful release and I did see plenty of creators uh, reviewing this. So I still need to watch Jackie Ina's review of it though to even see if she approves. What is that? No. <gasps> okay, it's sold out anyway, but somebody named Hip Dot, which I'm not familiar with, has put up a My Chemical Romance eyeshadow palette. I am a little bit too old for My Chemical Romance. I was already in like deep, unironic eye roll phase by the time My Chemical Romance became a thing. 
emo had become a thing that involved men wearing makeup and you know everyone having black hair but and I, I mean that in the best way possible by that time I feel like that was considered emo I'm gonna get in the weeds here but when I was in high school and I was an emo kid it was all super minimal like the guys were just trying to look like they didn't care actually everybody was trying to look like they didn't care you know we all just like went to Goodwill and we all wore like muted tones and we all just you know tried to act like beauty wasn't important to us and so that's what I mean by men wearing makeup like it just in like a matter of about four years while I was in college completely shifted the definition of emo and emo became like almost the like the myspace aesthetic and so people think of emo now as very hot topic it was not that okay we listened to bright eyes and we wore pants that were too short and we just leaned into our introversion it was not a showy thing but anyway yeah my chemical romance very very funny i also think that i mean i think it's funny i think it's funny i don't know i'm able to laugh at those kinds of things i'm able to laugh at my own music taste back then i, I like don't actually understand how this has anything to do with my chemical romance it's just like a color story which is interesting but also uh the lead singer of my chemical romance now writes the Umbrella Academy, which blew my mind. That's just it's the things that we end up doing. I don't know, man. Two Faced. Oh, I haven't bought anything by Too Faced in a really long time and I have no plans to, but they are putting out Be My Lover doll sized eyeshadow palette. While I'm very happy that we are doing small eye palettes now because I just think that it's a good trend. I think it's a, a good way, especially when you're gonna get the thrill anyway, that it's not something that's crazy expensive or it's bloating your collection or anything. It's easier to kind of concentrate your ideas and get what you want, but that is just about the most there's no there there nothing burger of an eyeshadow palette i have ever seen i would far rather honestly far rather spend four or five dollars on an elf eyeshadow palette of the 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 four the quad than than that i'm sure it's fine but no boring Ooh, wet and wild also has some cute little concise eyeshadow palettes Stop. Oh my God, they're $4. Ugh, that's so tempting. You know, I haven't set foot in a Walmart in a long time. I'm pretty sure they sell Wet n Wild, do they? I don't know. I think that's what's hard for me about drugstore beauty is that they put things out at an even faster clip than luxury prestige beauty does. And that's, that's saying something. And it's almost like they don't value their product, which makes it hard for me to value their product. Do you know what I mean? I think that's how we all feel about ColourPop too. We're like, if you're putting out a new release or two every week, like how much do you want me to care about it? So yeah, it's hard for me. I want something special. I'm not going to like, I want to try these things to have a credible opinion on like the Wet n Wild eyeshadow formula, but like, do I need to stay on top of their releases? No, not necessarily. <gasps> Good molecules put out a product that I didn't know about yet. This was December 22nd. Holy crap, I thought they would send this to me. Everything is delayed. I am just now getting all of my friend and family's like Christmas cards and it's January 2nd. So this is a Good Molecules Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. I can't wait to see how many people say Yerba Mate. Yerba Mate, Yerba Mate is South American, Brazilian I wanna say. It is a tea. You guys, you know, they sell it at the drug, not the drugstore. They sell it at gas stations now, you know, but um, the Guyaki stuff. But yeah, I remember that was like one of our hipster things in college was like buying the Bombilla and the and the little gourd and like that. Would, I mean, it was a thing. So anyway, being a hipster is a full time job. This is the Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel formulated to help revitalize and energize the eye area. Yerba Mate has its own version of caffeine in it. So that would be why you'd use it on your eyeballs. So that's pretty cool. And it's in a metal tube, which, which we love. They always do a good job with their packaging. So no, I won't be buying that, but I think they'll probably send it to me. I love good molecules. What have we here? <gasps> Milani, that was another one. So it's a, literally a brand that I have forgotten about. And you guys were like, Milani does a lot of really beautiful stuff at the drugstore. Yeah, they do. Their bullet lipstick formula is so pretty. It's so nice. So yeah, I definitely want to be trying some Milani stuff. They've got a tinted hydrating skin tint. And I'm not sure how many shades they have because this is just part of her giveaway, so it doesn't show everything, but it looks really, really pretty. But also, guys, Stila. Like, 
who, right? I definitely shopped some brands towards the end of last year that were like cruelty free, but I hadn't heard about them in a while and Stila was one of them. I was like, are we still using anything by Stila? I feel like Tati loved the Magnificent Metals and that was about it. But yeah, this Milani Glow Hydrating Skin Tint also looks really appealing. Okay, <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury. She is just nonstop. I don't know how she, it's like Elton John and all of his songs and how when he does these like, you know, reunion performances in Vegas or whatever, I don't know if that's actually a thing, but his performances, they like make the news because he forgets the words to his songs sometimes. And then people are like, um, he's had like 80 albums with like 15 songs on them each. So like that's exactly 1.1 uh, million songs. So how is he going to remember all the lyrics? Like, could you remember all the lyrics kind of thing? Like he's been making music for so long. I I feel like that's Charlotte Tilbury. Like, how do you keep all your quad palettes straight when you've put so many out and they are all brown and pink? <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely, you know, beautiful and exciting. Do you need more than one quad from Charlotte Tilbury? I would argue probably not. I don't know, they're just, they're all really, really similar. So I uh, I like my exaggerized one. And and honestly, I, I'll be honest, I don't think it's worth $53. It's nice, but it's not life-changing, you know? So yeah, I definitely like the PYT No BS palette more than I like the exaggerized palette. Sorry, not Ooh. Now, I do want to mention that Charlotte Tilbury did come out with more shades in her Flawless Filter. 12 shades! God, I thought it was like one color before. Now there's 12 shades in her Flawless Filter, and her Flawless Filter is not even a foundation. It's like, I, I reviewed it like it was a foundation way back in the day, and I was like, I'm an idiot, but I'm not the only person who's made that mistake. You think a Flawless Filter, you think it's going to, it's like a product that doesn't exist in any other line. Like, hey, here, have this like glimmery, shimmery thing that goes underneath your makeup or mixes with it, or you know what I mean? It's hard to kind of put your finger on exactly what it is, so I assumed it was a foundation, but technically it's not. But look at all those shades. That's that's pretty bomb.com. Oh boy, I never thought that would be so tempting. So it might be slightly toned up at the moment, but Buxom has put out a white Russian collection and I was always a huge fan of their white Russian lip gloss. In fact, I thought about that the other day. I used to only use Holy Grails, you know what I mean? Like when you have your own makeup collection, why do you need to go and try things that are off the beaten path? You find something that works and you just move on with your life. And Buxom's white Russian was that for me. It is a lip gloss that is just kind of a milky white color. And when it goes on, it just makes your lips go kind of nude. It, like you're wearing a lipstick that's your perfect shade, but it just sort of smooths out all the imperfections. I don't really know what it would look like on medium to deep skin tones, because it's basically like a milky white color. It worked on me. I don't know how it would work on other people. But I also love the Buxom Lip Gloss Formula because it's very plumping. So I did enjoy that very much. But, you know, at first glance here, they've got this whole collection that has been derived from the White Russian shade. And uh, it is an eyeshadow palette of white girl shades. It is a lip lipstick of a white girl shade. And I think an eye topper that is a white girl shade. And so I kind of wish that if they were going to do this, they would have, oh, I think it's a highlighter actually, that may may maybe they would have also done like a companion that was in an another set of shades because I think White Russian, again, like it's a beautiful whole color family, but they really leaned into it basically only being for white girls, so yeah. Also, is that Allie Glines? That looks like Allie Glines. I don't know, she just has giant eyes and giant eyelashes. Maybe that's why I think that. I mean, literally, the name is White Russian. They could have also gone with Mudslide, okay? There's also a thing called the Black Russian. It just doesn't have the cream in it. Anyway. Oh, and then finally, the Bite Mascara. I'm really hoping they send this to me. I do want to buy it after my no buy and try it, but I will be totally honest from a completely practical standpoint. Again, Hannah Louise Post and living in my head right now. I don't think I'm gonna like it because it's not a tubing mascara to my knowledge, is it? It's not, right? Who <laughs> mascara, grips to every lash, build you buildable, enhancing, flake and resistant and smudge resistant. Mmm, smudge resistant does not mean smudge proof. I imagine that it's probably going to fall into the same category as the Cake Mascara and the uh, Kosa's The Big Clean, which is that they are beautiful, but they smudge. 
and they make me have to rub my eyes when I wash my face. And I just, if I'm talking myself out of things, I can easily talk myself out of that. Another thing that I really loved from Hannah Louise is like, retrospectives on each year was just how her mindset changed about how much things should cost. She was like, man, beginning of the year, I thought absolutely nothing about spending $45 on, you know, X face cream. She's like, by the end of the year, it had been so few times that I had parted with that much money that I was like, I would never do that again. I kind of, kind of think that's a beautiful thing. I don't need to do anything stark like a no buy again, because I mean like a year long no buy, because again, I get boxed in and I get really miserable and I don't have credit card debt. I don't have, in fact, I will say, I don't buy makeup for myself very often. I buy makeup for my channel. The only things that I have bought like for myself, quote unquote, have been things like these, you know, from Hourglass where I was like, I just want to try that. It's not new. I don't really feel like anybody on my channel is going to care one way or the other if I actually own this, but it's something that I'm going to want to use on a daily basis kind of thing. Hourglass's reputation notwithstanding, there are just so many things else on my channel that I own that I just feel like are part of my job. And so I don't feel like I have like a makeup shopping problem. <laughs> I have a clothing shopping problem, okay? <laughs> But again, I just appreciate that insight and watching her channel is just like a brain cleanser. It's wonderful. No color pop. No color pop. We don't need a red and burgundy eyeshadow palette. Oh my God. Sommel, yay. Are we reaching or are we reaching? Wine and only, that is the name of this collection. Yes, that came out. I mean, I'm already way back. This is December 17th. This is a palette. Yes, you could argue those are blush tones, but that is a palette that would make me look like I had just come back from the dead, <laughs> like a zombie. Some people can wear red eyeshadows. I think deeper skin tones obviously can wear red eyeshadows. Do I need it? No, because it would make me look like I uh, was the walking dead. It would just make me look like a zombie. No, Morphe 2. No, we do not need a skincare line from you. Okay, and you don't get my money. That was easy. Ooh, what is Dot? Oh, of course, it's Danessa Myricks. I was like, those are some good shades. So uh, available now, new product, the Balm Contour by Danessa Myricks. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That is, that is an excellent contour shade. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is in my cart. It's in my cart, Danessa, don't you worry. I'm just waiting for waiting for the right time. So it's $26. Her stuff is not crazy expensive. I think that the quality of her products is just absolutely unbelievable, super beautiful. And I honestly, I've said this before and I'm still having the same issue. I shop her website and I kind of want everything and it's gotten increasingly difficult, especially with the things that tend to steal my attention away at random moments, like a baby, to decide what I actually want and pull the trigger on my cart because like, <laughs> it's not an issue of like, oh, do I need this? Or It's like, I literally go on her website and I can justify buying almost everything. It's, it's a weird problem to have, but I definitely want to try that contour. I will definitely be trying that. Khaki, you're supposed to be talking yourself out of new beauty releases. I can always justify Danessa Myricks, okay? Okay, but not this month. Ooh, what's that? Oh, Gucci. Dang, Gucci, y'all went in. Wait a second, did you go in? Yeah, that's a lot of shades, Gucci. That's a lot of shades, Gooch. See, this is where, and I'm not gonna do it, don't worry, because there are plenty of other channels out there who are gonna review a Gucci foundation, no problem. But this is one of the things that kind of hangs me up sometimes is it's these very, very well-established brands that have gobs of money and sell internationally that are going to put their money behind a really good shade range. Not to say that other shade ranges don't exist, but I would like to have, you know, an objectively incredible opinion on something with this good of a shade range, but Gucci's not cruelty free. You know, trust me, I've Googled it like yesterday. Just keep Googling everything because I'm like, are you, did you change your mind? Come on. Oh, and then the e.l.f. camo cream. Did we already talk about this? So basically there is a lightweight foundation tint and moisturizer situation from Milani, e.l.f. and Wet n Wild that I want to try if I can get my hands on them just to compare them for you guys. But yeah, I, um, not right now, but I, those are on my list. Again, I probably spent now like uh, $25 in my brain. <laughs> okay, let's move on to sephora.com here, and we will talk about the new releases. Let's just go makeup only. Charlotte Tilbury, Walk of No Shame Jewel Pot Eyeshadow. I'm sure that they are lovely. 
I am not sure that I would notice the difference in another pink shimmery eyeshadow in my collection. It's all I own. Hollywood Flawless Filter, we talked about this. Fantastic that they have created a bunch of new shades. I love it. I think that she did a great job. But I had the Hollywood Flawless Filter. It was fine. I never really noticed it. I think it's a little bit too wet for the things that I like to achieve with cream products. And um, it's just kind of one more layer of goo. Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealer Duo. So I always talk about brightening versus not brightening in terms of concealers. And they have devised this little double-ended pen that has concealer on each end. One that's supposed to be kind of your like concealer shade. The other one that's supposed to be your brightening shade. And gonna say that gets super duper deep. It doesn't get super duper deep. It doesn't get Nima Tang deep. It almost doesn't even get Jackie Ina deep. It's a cool idea, but those, mm -mm, that's the swatches don't cut it. <laughs> Look at the black girl's arm. It's got a bunch of white swatches on it. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Smashbox always on cream eyeshadow. When I first saw this, I thought that it was a foundation because it looks like a foundation. I was like, yay, a new foundation from Smashbox. That's another cruelty-free brand that I just don't talk about that much on my channel and I, I should. And I think that they weren't cruelty-free for a minute and then they went back to cruelty-free and so they sort of lost my attention because I used to love their setting spray. But anyway, I thought this was a foundation and then I started scrolling through the shades and this is my favorite. The photoshopped swatches. <laughs> it's the same swatch, they've just photoshopped the colors. That crap makes me crazy. That crap makes me crazy! <laughs> and yes, they do have like actual swatches on the arms and you know, that's fine, but um, but yeah, it, it is. It's like I, from those swatches, if that's exactly what they look like, I'm genuinely not interested because these are some super high saturation, almost like eye paints, which is just not my thing. I would never get any use out of that. But also I still don't feel like I have any idea by looking at this, how this performs. I would never feel confident buying that online, like off the internet looking at that. I have no idea what they are. Nervina, oh, how many palettes can you put out that look like that? My goodness. I mean, I'm sure that that's somebody's thing, but it's not my thing. <laughs> Too Faced, they're like, no, this is a different palette. I'm like, you could have fooled me. I have, I think in my very first anti-haul, I anti-hauled this kind of product and it still stands. So Glowgasm Lip Balm from Charlotte Tilbury is a color morphing formula. While I'm very enticed by something as ridiculous as a clear bullet lipstick, I will admit I am enticed by that. These, I mean, Winky Lux does them, a bunch of other companies do them, but they're almost like mood lipsticks in the sense where they say they're going to change based on your skin tone, but they really, they really just turn one color. They turn hot pink and hot pink is not my shade. Plus I'm going to apply this like it's a balm because it feels like a balm, which means I'll get it everywhere, which means I'll have like other parts of my mouth outside of my lips turning hot pink. It's just never been something that worked for me. If that's a color that works for you, I always say this, buy a hot pink lip gloss. There are some really beautiful hot pink lip glosses out there, but I don't need the gimmick of something changing colors on my lips just to just to screw me over later when I catch myself in the mirror and I'm like, I didn't mean to put that there. The Laura Mercier Mini Tinted Moisturizer, they've made minis of their tinted moisturizer. They have them in uh, regular and oil-free. I talked about this before. I used to really, really love this formula, but the first ingredient is ethyl hexyl methoxycinnamate, I believe. Ethyl hexyl methoxycinnamate, which is another word for octanoxate, which is a sunscreen that pisses my skin off. So that is not going to be anywhere in my, my future makeup collection. Same thing goes with the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Wonder. Glow Wonder? Light Wonder? Light Wonder. That is the most beautiful foundation ever, but I can't wear it for any extended period of time because it has that ethyl hexyl methoxycinnamate and it, it makes my whole chin just like clog up. It's gross. Oh, I hear my little one yelling. He's in this phase now where he just likes his own voice. And so it used to be when he would yell, there was something wrong. Now he just sits there in his little love every gym and just like yells and it's hilarious. It's awesome. So Dr. Jart BB, you know what? That's really, really neat. Dr. Jart, they're not cruelty free. I used to love Dr. Jart, but oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Three shades, Dr. Jart. I get it. It's a Korean brand, and so they don't really feel the need to accommodate a market of a whole bunch of different skin tones, but um, I, I think we could do better than that. All right, and finally, I think that we will just cut it off here. The Natasha Denona Trio Chrome, I almost said Trio Chrome eyeshadow palette. And 
This is an easy one for me to talk myself out of and I can talk myself out of Natasha Denona shadows in general because I am not equipped with the skills, nor will I ever be, to make a Natasha Denona matte eyeshadow work for me. I actually don't really love her shimmers either. I loved the liquid eyeshadows that she put out that I bought two of. I think those are really pretty. I wanna get more use of them in my new buy month and going forward, but you know, it was pretty hard for me to talk myself out of the glam palette because it was like beautiful cool tones and some really, really rich glitters and stuff. This is not hard for me to talk myself out of. That's just all scarab colors, you know? Like scarab is in this and scarab is also a shade that was in the liquid duochrome eyeshadow thing that she did. But the rest of these are all like colors that I would attribute to, you know, just like a really beautiful beetle or something, all the purples and the greens and stuff. This is definitely a unique palette. I have no idea what I would do with it on a regular basis, but I don't let my mind even go down that path because I do know that this would be a, uh, a formula that would frustrate me the same way that, I mean, I have sunk hundreds of dollars into Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes to finally realize that I'm just never going to like her formula, so. Yeah. All right, dudes. Oh, I didn't even mention our candle of the day. Did it stay lit? It did. Mmm, I'm working on finishing up my Volus Bamboso Bamboo. It smells like Christmas trees. It's very seasonal. We love her. But, ugh, that is all for me talking myself out of new beauty releases today. Guess how much money I actually spent? zero dollars and it feels very good and that is the plan for January. And we're gonna be doing a lot of kind of mini roundups and some get ready with me's and touching products that I've only touched once or twice and getting new looks out of them and things like that. So I'm really, really excited to do the, the no by January. It's helping me to really cleanse my brain. Again, I want to thank Hannah Louise Poston who by absolutely no extra effort of her own completely has inspired me and helped me again, like wash my brain out of all of the urges and impulses to buy things. Again, I typically don't buy things like for myself. I buy them for my channel and so I can almost always justify them and that's, almost a worse problem than just having like a makeup shopping problem. So yeah, I am very excited to get to know more of my products this month and going forward. If you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.